even Jim Jones didn't drink the Kool-Aid. I am God having a human experience as J.R. Tober. Nothing can be real if it cannot be articulated, shared, and conceptualized. My reality was found down I-95. I see through my mouth and I breathe out of my eyes. Please help me. I'm alive. You got it, man. You got it. The way that you flow with that, man, have you ever thought about like putting some music behind it? Yeah, people approach me all the time trying to get me to record. I have ideas for things and you know, like artists, you know, you you're an artist, you know, what you do, you got a you got a poem too. I got a yeah, whole bunch yeah. of oh, it's, it's, your four rays and the four two too. <laughs> <laughs> I saw yeah, you all yeah, on the yeah. picture you was on the stool. Yeah. I saw that. I, I, I think I went back with that. I don't know how I ended yeah. up like that, yeah. but it, that that the inspiration just yeah. hit you like yeah. on the stool like oh. yeah. But yeah, um, I got a few people that approach me with projects. I have a project that I'm currently mm -hmm. working on. Kev Nice, check Kev Nice out too. Okay, like the, shout out to Kev. The man. hottest producer, I'm telling you, it's like the, he's a flamethrower. It's like the, mm -hmm. the heat is crazy that this, that he produces. He's, um, and he and I have a um, project called October Nice, so Nice October. Okay, That we're okay. gonna work on like a five uh, song EP. And you know why I ask, man, because I encourage this, so I encourage this, man. Let's get more people, uh, more artists on CD. Because, and I say this, man, the more, the more artists on CD, poet, artists, spoken word artists, whatever it may be, we're in the art, right? Because I do, I did a 20 minute mix, right? With nice uh, Neil Soul. Threw in Kelly Robinson. I say her. K that Rob? Oh, no, K Rob. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. But um, I threw in her. Um, you left me. Cause yeah, and I pulled that from her CD, right? And and, and I, how I blended that music and her and her um her piece in man was wonderful. It's on YouTube, man. And it's and it's like I got calls about it. And they was like, man, that was nice. People ready to hear something like that, where it's music intertwined with poetry. And there was a still the the, um, the instrumental behind it, mm. so it was like, man, I can do it, man. You know what I'm saying? I can put it; it can be effective. Okay. Even if I take it with the the indie artists or the mainstream little Anthony Hamilton, Johnny, or whatever, yeah. I just had it flowing, man. I and um, that was that mix was uh, K. Rob and also um, Lamont Hill. Okay. Cause I got like a couple of his CDs, yeah. and I just and I just flew flew it in there like a, a straight twenty minute flow of poetry and music. Yeah. And, I, and I, I think that we should, those should be more out there and people will enjoy it, man. Yeah, cool. But I think back in the 70s, the poets was doing that. Cool. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it was a lot like the last poets and mm -hmm. Gil Scott Herman back yeah. in those days. They were always accompanied mm -hmm. by some type of, you know, musicianship. You know, right. Longer, or just right. an old full band. Right. So yeah, yeah. Definitely. And they, and they put out CDs. I think I do have the last poet CD. Yeah. Uh, hard to find. <laughs> but I have it. And... That that inner mix, man, the music and then it going to poetry or yeah. music, music going to poetry. However the flow, it's a flow to it. Yeah. And people will listen to those CDs, man, they will they be like, man, and then they get to know the artist more yeah. and the whole nine yards, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I got one more uh got one more song to play, my man Lowry, man. A hey, much love to you, brother. This is new track called Fall. So we're gonna play that, man, get that going next week. We're gonna go to the commercial right here, listen to Lowry. You know what I'm saying? Don't go away. We come back with uh, J. October, and I know he got something else for us, man. You know what I'm saying? Perform a live right here in the Cool Out Mix. Your boy, DJ Cloud, and J. October. Thank you. 
Sagittarius child. My Sagittarius child, you are becoming a woman now. Passionate, kind, loquacious and brilliant. Comfortable in your mahogany skin. Friends are easy makes. And remember you are beautiful even if you aren't told by the boys that you want to hear it from. Guard your holy grail heart because the false prophets will appear looking to exploit its sacredness by promising you eternal life. But always remember true salvation begins with loving yourself. It won't come from the countless rappers and R&B stars whose faces adorn your walls. It won't come from the magazines telling you that you are good but just not good enough. It comes from the recognition that self-love is the soul's genius. So love yourself first and everything else will fall into line. Your birth confirmed to me that miracles come in moments and time has taught us to become better at exchanging codes. Father, daughter speak, translated from another language and we're doing the best we can with what we understand. I won't talk a hole in your head, but I just want you to know that freedom comes with responsibility. And if you decide that you never want to grow up, please do me a favor and do a damn good job of fooling people that you have. For the time being, I want you to smile, breathe, walk in the light, make cookies, write poems, own your power, shape your place in this origami world, journal your thoughts, Laugh until your body shakes, look cute in the corner booth of the cafe, wear amazing shoes, sing out loud in the subway, get some life insurance, maintain self-assurance, sustain positive endurance, be a good friend, always choose truth, respect all of the real ones and have no time for fake ones, do your pretty girl rock, swag out on your haters, appreciate art. Be careful with letting your emotions dictate your actions and let these dudes know that my daddy doesn't tolerate any disrespect to me, so watch your walk, because if you act stupid, he got the heat for you, cuz, and I certainly do. Mm. Snatch joy, Binti. Be open and willing to receive all the wonder that life has to offer. Keep wondering, keep questioning, and keep beauty. Keep light, keep divinity, and keep knowing that my love for you is infinite and only death can come between us. Mm. J. October, everybody. 
J. Octo, man, flowing it right here on the Cool Out Mix. And we got time for another piece, man. I'm gonna let this brother finish out, man. He's in the spotlight. Get to know J. Octo, man. You're hearing him live right here. You're gonna see the videos put out, man. The whole nine yards. And uh, we'll give you the uh, contact information like, before we leave. But he got time for another one, man. Get to know this brother right here. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. This is called uh, Cornmeal Porridge. The first God I remember was Ron Kim, and that ain't no joke. His sound wave sermons played on bodega blocks and tenement rooftops, on Mr. Magic's rap attack and Ralph McDaniel's video music box. I was baptized in the river of shiny things and slain supreme mathematics and drastic rap tactics. I was wiped clean from the foulness of dope fiend dreams each time I heard an intricate 16, followed by a nah, me. And four years later, his only begotten son would hit the scene and drastically change the way that I looked at things. That was 1988. I was 15, surviving pre-gentrified Brooklyn bullshit. Spent lots of time in front of a pool pit. Growing up in a household with a devout Christian Caribbean grandmother who would often say, the blood of Christ is all over 130 Lafayette Avenue, apartment 2B, and we pray every day because it's either Jesus Christ's way or the highway. And, plead, and my pleas fell on deaf ears when I complained about doing things my way. None of that made sense because I knew if there was a God, he could stare directly through my cellophane heart and see the tenderness that rested there. No guilt for being human, no shame for refusing to suffer in his name, no fear of living, no shame for making mistakes, no punishment, just love and moments of silence where the ears of the world are deaf to our conversations. My grandmother was a walking Bible spitting scriptures like tobacco juice and phlegm and repeatedly saying shit like God don't like ugly, which in my cynical teenage mind meant that God was into selective salvation because don't ugly people need blessings too? What about them? Or he may not come when you need him, but he's always on time. And in my crazy teenage mind, I thought, if he doesn't come when I need him, then what the fuck am I calling him for? My head was loaded with black back talk that I would never utter out of unadulterated fear because being cursed out in patois is a terrifying experience. Despite, despite my silent disapproval of faith and teenage angst, cornmeal porridge and eggs were on the table every morning. Vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a little extra sugar for her pygmy who was growing up way faster in Bucktown than she could ever imagine growing up in Brownstown, Jamaica as the daughter of yam farmers who ate what they grew and never had enough to waste. Whenever I refused my porridge, I would hear every mickle make a muckle, which meant every little bit counts, so be grateful for what you have because some have none at all. Although I didn't agree with my grandmother's religious views, I knew that she loved me with her whole heart and the English language is too weak to describe the comfort that I found in that. My resistance to religion screamed louder as Lafayette and Nostrand Avenues called me in a rough, gritty tone, letting me know it had nothing to offer me but idle time with smokers, poppers, sniffers and shooters, drug thugs, abusers and users. But as a heretic of Christian Caribbean heritage, I felt a criminal con congregation was perfect to witness my testimony. The timbre of Granny's voice sang me old, but me no cold, echoed in my head, but echoed in my head, but my rebellion was a teenager's destiny, and being freed is a right to every person breathing life. Comforted by the ignorance of thugs made the transition from one world to the next world as high as the voice on Gladys Knight floating next to a satellite, and although death was on every corner, I stood hard body like a corner, because confirmation of my demise would be certified when I decided I was ready to go, because I'm the pride of bed style, I think fast and speak slow, that understandable smooth shit that murderers move with, but wait, I was raised to have love in me, so why am I giving love to these loveless streets? At night, hearts were cold and warm bodies of lost boys with grown hands squeezing triggers because their biggest fear was that they were powerful. Patience and time are powerful, but no one took the time with them like my grandmother took with me. And on a dark Brooklyn night, there I was with a heart too big for my body and a tongue swollen with regrets. I left traces of my dignity and the cracks of cement blocks on the streets where misguided souls roamed that had never tasted the love put into a bowl of cornmeal porridge. Vanilla, cinnamon, 
nutmeg, and a little extra sugar for her pickney, who was too stubborn to realize that the love I saw on the streets existed in 61 inches of weary flesh, patois tongue, and hands clenched tight, praying for the salvation that her grandson didn't believe he needed to pray for. I miss you, Granny, and if you were here, I'd still be resistant to your religion, but I have the chance to tell you with all the love in my throat, thank you, and I understand, but all I can do now is write it in a poem. Man, you got it, man. That's J. October, man, if you don't, thank man, you. wonderful work, man, thank wonderful you. pieces, man. This brother just flew the whole hour, the whole 55 minutes, whatever you want to call it. But you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming, man. Appreciate you blessed me, man. Hey, it's, it's always a blessing, man. It's a problem. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get out of here, get up to the um, Egotistic Radio. What's up next, man? Support these brothers as well. Go to thecoolout.com and you can see footage from this show. You can see the mixes I've done. You can see all the artists that are out there. Um, shout out to D Black, man. We just confirmed him to come out on the 16th. Um, and he'll be out on the 16th, man, on May 16th, D Black, right here in the cool out mix, getting it in, man, live. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see what we're going to spit. You know, we're going to freestyle right here. We're going to put it to D Black, man. Much love to you. Much love to Hostile. Much love to Cisco Kid, Rod L, the whole crew, man, the DMV artist, man. This is what I do. You got the whole hour to be in the spotlight. May 9th, next week. Brittany Tanner will be in the building, man. And she's about to sing it up right here on the Cool Out Mix, man. And we out of here, man. So until next Thursday, peace out, man. All right.